Attention, Imperial citizens. Do your duty to the Empire. Back the Vintage Collection. Let Hasbro know, respectfully, that you want more of the Vintage Collection. For more details, visit bosksbounty.com. And now, back to your originally scheduled communique. Greetings, Imperial citizens. Thanks again so much for choosing to watch. I'm Anthony. I'm trying something new, a segment I'm calling History Of. And my inaugural offering is History Of the Death Squad Commander, or Death Star Trooper, or Imperial Navy Commander. He has so many names. So how did we get from this to this? Starting out with something small to uh, work out the formatting and get a feel for the segment before I tackle something bigger like the Stormtrooper or Darth Vader because I've already started working on those and they're going to be massive undertakings. I also want to stress that I have no particular inside knowledge with either Hasbro or Kenner and uh, I'm just uh, cobbling together bits I've uh, read or heard or and my limited knowledge of manufacturing. So if I get anything wrong, I welcome correction. The Imperial Navy Commander started its journey in 1978 as the Death Squad Commander. Well, technically, it has a little bit of history before that. As Kenner Lore would have it, this figure started out as Grand Moff Tarkin. But Kenner ultimately decided that having action figures of two old men in the first main wave might not go over so well. So adjustments were made, the Death Squad Commander was born. There's actually some controversy over this figure, the gray uniform. Pictured on the card is the actor in the control room who appears to be wearing a gray uniform, despite troopers in every other scene wearing black uniforms. We can only guess that the Death Squad Commander's uniform is gray and that he has a rank insignia because of his gestation period as Tarkin. And although Star Wars had become, like, the biggest thing ever, these were still toys, and Kenner had no idea how fanatical the fans would become. So accuracy probably wasn't a paramount goal. As with all the original Kenner Star Wars figures, it had five points of articulation, head, shoulders, and hips and it carried Kenner's version of the E-11 blaster. The Death Squad Commander would undergo a name change to Star Destroyer Commander early in the Empire line, but otherwise would remain the same throughout the life of the original Star Wars line and be re-released on every subsequent card back, save for Power of the Force. Then came the dark times. Kenner brought Star Wars toys back into our lives in 1995. However, it wouldn't be until 1998 until we received an updated version in the freeze frame phase of the Power of the Force 2 line. This time, the figure was called the Death Star Trooper. Overall, it's a nicely done figure, thankfully coming after the previous year's He-Man era. But with only six points of articulation and a pre-posed stance, it wasn't great for formation lineups. Perplexingly, it came with a rifle instead of a blaster, but it had a removable helmet. The other interesting factoid is that two things were happening at the time of this release. Kenner was beginning to experience an oversaturation in the market. In other words, Star Wars sales were sluggish. And George Lucas had announced he was making more Star Wars. Yay! What this meant for the freeze frame Death Star Trooper was that it was relegated to fan club exclusive status. As you can imagine, I had several freeze frame Death Star Troopers, uh, maybe about 10, but I sold them all once uh, the 30th anniversary collection came around in 2007. By then, Kenner had been sold to Hasbro, and we got a significant upgrade, super articulation. The 30th anniversary Death Star Trooper was pretty great due to its multiple points of articulation. 14 points, in fact, with nine being ball jointed. It came with the standard E-11 blaster, working holster, and a removable helmet. I loaded up on them. I had 38 at one point. If there's one fault that the figure had, it was its overall sculpt. I'm not quite as picky, but Hasbro was listening. In 2012, we got the significantly improved, top to bottom re-sculpted Imperial Navy Commander via the Vintage Collection, and then again via the three and three quarter inch Black Series. What an improvement. 
It was the re-sculpt that I didn't know I needed. This time, this one comes with the DH-17 blaster that these troops used in the original Star Wars, which were also used by the Rebels. He also supports a removable helmet, a working holster, and I did a whole video on head swapping this figure. Same exact points of articulation as the 30th anniversary Death Star Trooper, but with a more flexible below the belt tunic that allows better hip mobility. However, as stated in the previous video, there's one glaring error. The Republic emblem on his shoulder rather than the Imperial emblem. One would have thought that this would have been corrected between 2012 and 2015, but alas, no. And that's where we are as of 2020 with the Imperial Navy Commander. Because of the emblem error, I can't quite call this figure definitive, but I'll take it. I hope you learned a little something that you didn't know before. Please leave a comment below. I welcome uh, feedback, corrections, and criticism. And in closing, remember, do your part for the Empire. Like, subscribe, share, and you can follow me on Twitter at the Imperial Com, and wait for the next transmission.